we're Charlie and Leanne, a couple from California who chucked everything to spend the next five years cruising around the Pacific Ocean on our boat, Juliet. And our little dog, too. Yes, we're still in La Paz, but we're finally getting ready to leave. So in this episode, we will share what we've been doing to keep ourselves busy here in La Paz. We will walk through all of the boat upgrade projects that we've been working on and that have been keeping us here. And then be sure to stick around as we have a special treat for you. Close up video of our amazing whale shark expedition. Good morning, La Paz. Good morning, fleet. It is 8 a.m. and this is La Paz Cruises Net, brought to you by Club Cruceros. Today is Friday, February 7, 2020. My name is Debbie from the sailing vessel La Rev, and I'll be your net controller today. Please turn your radios to high power and turn off any noisemakers, refrigerators, inverters, etc. That's just so that we can hear you. So what are we doing in La Paz? Well, sometimes we play card games. On Thursday nights, it's darts at La Costa Restaurant. Sometimes we play a little bocce ball. Sometimes we attend parties. At this one, they were auctioning off a couple of folding bikes. Money goes to the kids. Let's start it at uh, 150 bucks, 3,000 pesos. 3,000 pesos, looking for four. 4,000 pesos. Charlie got one of them. So we just won this at the auction. They had an auction for a charity. And uh, it's a folding bike. Um, they had two of them, two different models. This one looks like it, the seat goes up higher, so I thought it would fit me better. Um, and I'm going to go take it on a test spin now, go to the bank, get some money so I can pay for it. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, take care. Have fun! Bye. There goes Charlie on his new bike. We've been pleasantly surprised at how active the music scene is here in La Paz. One night we went out for dinner and to catch some live music at a funky little place called La Morante Art Bar. We were treated to a performance by a singer named Jess Clemens, who performed some original tunes. She really had a lovely voice. Simi and it seems we're on our own. I've got deja vu with this rising sun. I've got 10,000 miles to drive before I'm done. It's pretty far indeed. Another night, we went to a jazz and blues festival right down the street from our marina. The venue was fascinating. The company was wonderful, the music was fantastic, but best of all was the eye-popping crimson sunset that just seemed to linger forever. But really, when we're not working on boat projects, we mostly just relax on the boat and nap a lot. And now for the big moment we've been waiting for, the completion of the Watermaker install. This is the one thing that's been dragging on, keeping us here in La Paz. Finally, it's all installed, and now we're about to turn it on and test it for the very first time. Yeah, just so now let's turn on the boost pump. We should see the pre-filters fill up and then we should be able to go outside and see brine. Yeah. Yeah. Are we ready? Yep. Okay, here, here it goes. Still not getting enough 
We should be getting a lot more. Let's look at the strainer to see if. Is that the pickling should be off? Let's try it again. Sounds good. Sounds normal. Those are already filled. Stand over here and let Margaret turn it on in case it's what yeah. uh, <laughs> no. That would be bad. Ready? There we go. So, no leaks. No leaks down here. No leaks. Everything looks good. Can you have a leak? Where's that? Let's turn the stuff up. We either have a blockage in that line, it's pink, or that valving down there. Or the back connection. It's still leaking. So let's just turn the boost pump on and fix it. Okay. Yeah, it's leaking. Yeah. Alright, it it's leaking, Charlie. Turn it off. We'll put it in. I think we fixed it. Oh, good. There's the brine coming out of the new through hull. And here it is, our installed, fully operational Cruise RO AC powered water maker. This is a desalination system that will convert seawater to fresh drinking water. Success! So <clears throat> one of the main projects that we had when we came to La Paz was getting a, uh, an arch installed so that we can have davits for our dinghy. The davits will make it easy to uh, lower and raise the dinghy out of the water when we're at anchorages or if we want to go into way for short day trips. If we're going offshore, we would move the dinghy onto the bow to keep it out of the way. But this is very handy for um, nightly hauling the boat out of the water so it stays clean and also to make it less susceptible to getting stolen or lost. We also added <coughs> this outboard mount, which brings it a little bit further away from the boat so it's less likely to hit the boat when you're um, raising it from the dinghy onto the mount. You know, we have this ho hoist, engine hoist, built into the arch. Um, the, the guy that did the arch did a really good job. He basically integrated it into the existing pulpit um, very nicely and reinforced it in the back on the transom. It extends uh, less than a foot beyond the transom, so it doesn't really increase the overall length. One nice thing about the davits is that those arms uh, be pivoted in when we wanted to go to a marina and put the boat in storage we can just fold those in and again it will uh, minimize the length of the boat. Um, we also had a solar panel installed and um, that's a 365 watt solar panel which generates about uh, 20 amps during the day, 20 to 25 amps during the day. Um, we also relocated the uh, stern light from down below to up in the center of the arch to give better visibility when we're underway in swells. We replaced our, our aft lifelines with uh, stainless steel tubes. This makes for a very strong uh, handhold when you're boarding the boat or going from the cockpit uh, forward. Previously had these mounted with fittings. This is all nicely welded. Um, both, both of these are welded all the way through. Um, we also did some modifications to this uh, boarding ladder. We had it raised to clear the dock better and put a round bar on the bottom so that um, if it does hit something, it's not going to cause damage. Uh, the original one had sharp edges, and so now it has a nice soft round edge. And then we um, added this this fitting here so that the ladder can actually be tilted up and the lifeline strung through it while you're underway. And then when you need 
need it, you just drop it. And this works good for not only just a dock, but also if you have a dinghy, bring the dinghy up inside the boat. It's the perfect height for going from the dinghy onto the boat. Another thing we did is we had this plate welded between the two bow rollers. And what this plate does is allows us to attach our Code Zero furler um, about nine inches in front of the forestay. The, up at the top of the mast, we had the uh, halyard pull, pulled out about the same distance, nine inches. So this should allow our top-down furler to clear the, the forestay so that it'll deploy easier and be a little bit ahead of this, less likely to jam or tangle um, against the, the uh, forestay. Additional things that we had done, uh, we hired somebody to make new hatch covers, both for the big hatches and for our um, life raft. These are projects that I might have been able to do myself with my Sailrite machine, but they were a little more than I wanted to take on. However, I did take on a couple of smaller projects. Um, we did discover here in La Paz that there can be um, nasty mosquito infestations, especially right after a rain. And, uh, but it gets hot, so sometimes we want to be able to have the big hatch open. And we didn't have any um, mosquito screening for the big hatches. So I, using my new Sailrite machine, um, I made these mosquito netting covers or inserts for this hatch and for the big hatch uh, on the bow. So the other thing we did with this um, arch project is we added a mount here for our um, Iridium Go satellite antenna and the one on the outside is our GPS antenna for the B&G system. So this brings the antennas up and away from anything else um, so they should have very clear read of the sky and give good performance. So one thing I like about this arch is it's tall enough so that I can actually stand underneath it um, when dealing with any of uh, the systems here. If I want to um, get to the davit lines or um, check the lights or use the barbecue, um, we can stand up, which is uh, really a nice feature. It also brings it away from the Bimini solar panels. And um, another thing we did is we added this little seat here. Um, it's a pretty simple thing. We just had a guy here in La Paz make up a piece of fiberglass to my dimensions. We added a little support here and uh, these little um, attachment things here so we can easily tilt this thing up and remove the bar if we want to get this out of the way to do something back here in the aft uh, cockpit. It's a nice dirty seat. It should provide a comfortable position for when being underway to clearly see over the bow, uh, the bow of the boat. Here, another thing we did is we had these chops made for our dinghy. Um, this is same kind of umbrella material that the rest of the boat is covered with. It helps pr protect the hypalon material from the harsh UV sun rays. And um, that's about it. So now let's talk about some of the upgrades we've done to the interior of the boat. Um, more sewing projects, some of which I probably could have done myself, but um, it would have would have taken a lot of time and uh, we or were told about some people here that do great work. So we got slip covers made for our uh, cushions. We went and picked up the fabric, brought it over to this wonderful lady who's right across the street from the marina and she did all the work in one day. So we have slip covers here over there. She covered our pillows which are starting to fall apart and as you can see we have slip covers over here. The colors are all matching and really the pricing was just amazing and the, the quality of work. I mean, we could not be more thrilled with this. We did think about doing slip covers for the entire thing, but we decided that this was, was you know, plenty just to have it on the bottom. And out here in the heat, it's really nice to have something that is not, that your thighs are not gonna stick on when you're sweaty. So this is really comfortable fabric, kind of silky feeling on your legs. And the great thing is you can remove them and if you look underneath, you can see we have these straps here. They can be easily removed and washed. So, you know, after a season of us sweating on these slip covers, we can take them in and get them washed.
in a previous episode, we mentioned that we had issues with our um, toilet and holding tank plumbing. And so one of the big things we wanted to do while we're here in La Paz is uh, correct those issues. And one of the main issues was our vent was um, in a bad location. The original vent was on the side, had a tendency to get clogged. So we relocated the vent for the holding tank to the very top center of the tank on the inspection port. And we rerouted the hose. So now I don't think it'll ever clog again. Um, it's, it's, I think, going to be a real big improvement. Um, the second thing was the holding tank was not pumping out. We couldn't pump it out when it's sea. Um, and I originally thought it was due to the vent being clogged. Um, turned out that the actual um, pump was installed upside down. And um, so <laughs> that's, I guess, a, a main reason why it wouldn't pump out. Um, the other thing is the valve that you use, the diverter valve, to switch from holding tank to overboard uh, was in a very awkward and hard to reach position. Uh, Leanne could not turn it, I always had to turn it, which would be um, awkward if um, I was taking a nap or something and she needed me to turn it. So we relocated it to here where it's very easy to get to. Um, it's also um, much easier to operate. This is a much better valve than the old one. Uh, we further streamlined it by removing an anti-siphon device and redid all the plumbing. So now we have shorter runs, more direct runs, and we should get no more clog. So another change is we replaced the manual pump with an electric macerator pump. Just flip a switch and now the holding tank will empty in a minute or two. Whale sharks, the biggest fish in the sea, visit the Bay of La Paz at this time of year to feed in the plankton-rich waters. Swimming with them can be both a humbling and exhilarating experience, as we were about to find out. We set out on a day trip, along with Sue from Capricorn Cat, hoping to find them. It was a quick 30-minute boat trip out to their feeding grounds, during which we had our safety briefing. Then Marco, our guide for the day, got to work scanning the seas for their telltale fins, along with several other dive boats looking for the same thing. Finally, he spotted one, and we quickly jumped in the water.
Well, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for sticking around for a kind of long episode, but we just don't know when we're going to be able to post another one. We're leaving in just a few days to head north into the Sea of Cortez, where we will drop anchor at some remote coves, maybe do some hikes, some snorkeling, hopefully see lots of wildlife and get some good video footage. Uh, but the internet is pretty sketchy up there, so it may be a few weeks before you hear from us again. Uh, but don't worry, we'll be back in La Paz in April, and we'll catch up with you all then. Uh, we will be posting updates on our following Seas blog, which you can follow on our Facebook page. So don't forget about us. And thanks for joining us. And please don't forget to click like and to subscribe. See you later.